everyone. Um, so a problem with uh, the developer community is that we say that we're all so that you can come from it from any space. So you can come from it um, from a code school, you can come from it from a PhD program, you can come from it having, be, having been totally self-taught. And yet, there are certain ways in which code culture is very similar. Um, like, there's, there's a mold that, that people often see you as trying to fit. Um, they're trying to see whether you're, you're conforming. And um, that's not cool. So today I'm going to talk about shibboleths. Um, shibboleths are um, proverbial lines in the sand that determine who belongs and who doesn't. And many of these are in programming, unfortunately. Um, so your text editors, your, your um, programming languages, your tooling, they're all topics of vigorous conversation. And so, because of that, um, yeah, like it can be very intimidating for a newcomer, in particular, because like you're kind of in the crossfire of the of the war of Vim versus Emacs or what have you, and that's not a good place to be. And you might not have even chosen either, or you might be in a position where you're just starting out and somebody's telling you to try something completely different. So, like, for example, you're, you're working on a project in a makerspace, and it's a project in, in Java, it's a calculator, and it's your first month programming. And then somebody, and then you're like, hey, check this out, wanna take a look at my project? It's in Java, it's a, it's a calculator. And then, they, and then the person just says, could you just do it in Ruby? Well, that's going to be a little bit alienating, and it's going to make you think, okay, well, maybe I chose the wrong programming language. Um, whoa. But imagine experiencing that from multiple people and from multiple programming languages. And oftentimes, like, whether you're going on to a message board or whether you're, you're going to a meetup, you get some sort of, you get some sort of, resistance to the the path that you've chosen and you feel as if like oh wow i feel like i have to start over again and and that's a, a terrible feeling for for a beginner so even when so part of the problem is that we as developers we see the community as as um as a set of intersections as opposed to a greater union so like I'm here in the, in the Python camp. I'm here in the in the camp of uh, of Java. I'm here in in the camp for Ruby. And it depending on on who you are, you might th think that it's important to overlap. Um, so okay, I think that people who are actually um, very good at Python are the only real programmers. But I also will allow people who code in Python and Ruby to be considered programmers. So that's that's one sort of thing, and there are other there are other manifestations of this, but yeah, like we we have a problem with seeing each seeing each other as almost enemies or as seeing other programmers as less than for some reason reason or another. And so I just so the cool thing is that um, I I talked about Venn diagrams. And like I talked about something that was like complex, like using set theory, um, but it wasn't. But I tried to make it so that it wasn't super in intimidating. Um, I don't know whether I was successful, but <laughs> but the the but the interesting thing is that for us to be welcoming to uh, new people, we have to we have to show that things aren't as intimidating as they need to be. Um, also oftentimes that can be shown through vernacular. So the way that people the way that people talk is really important in terms of making a place welcome or not welcome. And yeah. So developing requires a, a certain set of skills, but not everyone not everyone arrives at them um, in the same way. And so 
as developers, we have a responsibility uh, to de-emphasize aspects of cold culture that help maintain its status as an intimidating monoculture. So, well, what can we do about that? I'm gonna take some time here to talk about um, West African culture. Um, I'm from West Africa, and, I, and I'm also African American. And I'm gonna talk about joking relationships in particular. So, and I'm going to then bring it back to coding cult programming culture. So, in West Africa, um, like in certain parts of West Africa, you have joking relationships where, where there is some sort of lineage link between a certain tribe and another tribe or between uh, one family and another. And so if you meet somebody for the first time who happens to have a joking relationship with you by, based on your last name or based on your tribe, you uh, engage in a certain amount of joking. Um, so, so that's really interesting because you can find parallels with these kinds of relationships in, for example, the military in the United States. Um, so an airman meets meets uh, somebody who's a sailor. Airmen will joke that that he as an airman is smart, and then and the person from the navy will joke that he as a as a, as a sailor is is tough, and so on and so forth. Um, fun fact: I have family in the military on in m multiple branches, and um, so that's that's a really that's really interesting, like uh, something that, that we bring to the table just in, in our relationships. Um, and an interesting manifestation also in African American culture is the notion of the dozens. So like, your, your daddy's so tall, he looks like he's standing on stilts types of jokes. Um, and just to deflate a situation to make sure that it's not as, not as tense as it, as it needs to be. Um, if you're meeting somebody for the first time or what have you, making a, a competition seem less high stakes. Um, so sometimes exchanges in, in programming can seem like that. Um, when if, for example, you go to a, a maker space, I go to a lot of maker spaces, uh, and, you, and you meet somebody who's working on, on some, a project in Python and you, and you code in JavaScript, and the guy who codes in Python keeps on talking about what, about how you, uh, as a JavaScript user, must be really going through some hard times because it's just a really tough language, and um, and it has all these problems, and you're and essentially saying your language is broken, but in a joking manner, and and so I mean you can retort in some way, you can you can say that well JavaScript runs the world, so whatever, uh, but it's, you don't want to always be in, in the, those sorts of interactions, even though that's a, that's a more jovial interaction than, than a rabbit season, duck season exchange about, about uh, programming languages or what have you. It's still an, an uneasy interaction. And, if you're, and it's even worse if there's an asymmetric relationship. So if somebody's joking at you and you're just starting in a, in a programming language, uh, and for example, if you're coding in PHP and you, and you meet somebody who's coding in Scala, I'm just saying programming language A versus programming language B. The issue there is that um, somebody if that person rags on on PHP and and you're barely experienced with it, it's just it's just you chose it as the to best tool for the job. Then you're not going to feel so good about about PHP, even if the person is joking. So it's so that's that's kind of a, a tough situation. All right, so let's see. Well. The other thing I want to bring up, so I, I've practiced um, uh, capoeira, and I, I've uh, also done uh, b-boying, also known as breakdancing. And the interesting thing about that is that they have they have certain uh, protocols for entering a entering the circle. So, for example, like in capoeira, it's called the hoda, and like you actually go to one end of the circle and and you maybe cartwheel in, and you and you 
engage in some sort of capoeira play with somebody else. Um, and then, um, and in, in b-boying, it's, it's similar. Like you jump into the, into the middle of the cypher uh, versus somebody um, to, ch to challenge them. Like there's, there's a certain etiquette and, and protocol. Um, in programming, um, there, are these, there are these circles, these, these closed circles that are hard to enter. And, that's, and that can be really intimidating for, for people who are, whether they're from a different part of the country or whether they're, they're new to a language, um, they, they find it difficult to enter. And so it, it puts up an unnecessary barrier to entry for newcomers in whatever capacity that they're newcomers. And that's the thing about programming is that we're constantly learning because we have to continually be moving at the pace of technology, which is a breakneck speed. And that means that um, there are always going to be new tools. There are always going to be new languages. There are always going to be new X, Ys, and Zs that we have to add to our process. And that's cool. I mean, like, and, and, but at the same time, like, if the environment is, is one that is, that is hostile, it makes it really unpleasant. Um, and it's not, it's not necessarily in a, a hostile environment that, that's consciously hostile. It's, a, it's an environment that's, that just happens to be so. Just like there, we live in a society where there, is, there are structural injustices that, that aren't necessarily, well, some of them are, are definitely deliberate, but some, and people commit them uh, uh, in a deliberate manner. But there are certain things where just by being part of a certain group, just by being a white man, you benefit from, from certain structural injustices. And excuse me for a moment, just had a moment there. Um, so, and so based on that, um, yeah, like in, in programming, there's just a, there, there is a similar aspect of like structural um, barrier to entry. So back to Matauk, what can we do about this? Like we have a situation where we, we are kind of at an impasse. Like we have, we have all, of, all of these barriers to people, to newcomers, to people who are newcomers to languages. And like I said, you're, always, you're going to, always going to be a newcomer at something within programming because there's always something new. And we need to find a way to move forward. So here are some, here are some best practices, some alternatives. Um, first thing is ask yourself, like, especially if you're getting, engaging in some sort of argument or, or discourse, is this a proverbial hill that I want to die on? Oftentimes the answer is no. And then also ask yourself, with, with my argument in this conversation, am I treating things as more important than people? Things versus people. What, <laughs> choose what's more important for you. And um, like, clearly the, the choice is, is people, but oftentimes when we get in the, in the middle of an argument, we get caught up in what's in being quote unquote right about, about something. And, and oftentimes it's a very pedantic point. Um, then have a code of conduct. Uh, even for a weekly meetup, um, having a code of conduct is, is a good practice because it helps to signal that you're making a space as welcoming as possible. Um, and that you, if a space for some reason is not welcoming for some reason, you will act to rectify that uh, problem. And um, yeah, what makes a good code of conduct? I mean, it's clear, it's welcoming, and it has internal buy-in. So, like, it clearly lays out what is allowed and what's prohibited. Uh, it makes sure that people, um, people from underrepresented groups know that they'll be welcomed and know that if there's anything unwelcoming, that that will be rectified. And also that everyone organizing the group actually believes in the code of conduct and will, is willing to act on it to enforce it. 
Um, and then gather and s then like one thing we need to do is gather in semicircles <laughs> as opposed to cir circles, because it's always good to make space for people to get into. Um, I had to be a little bit geeky to and use a, a little use Mr. Pac-Man here, but um, it's always good to it's always good to create space for people to enter as opposed to not having space for people to enter. And so um, I, I can speak from experience. Um, I, I went to uh, an enterprise uh, coding event, and I, I, it was at, it hosted at a, at a company, some big company, and it was, it was great to be there, but a lot of the people were, uh, who were there were, worked for the company that was hosting it, and I didn't know anyone. And so it, it was a little... It was a little disconcerting. I'm I'm actually pretty extroverted, so but still, like it was it was disconcerting nonetheless. Uh, and so, by that token, um, it was really great when somebody who all, who worked for the company was very intentional about making sure that I felt welcomed by um, literally uh, making sure that there was space in in the circle of of his colleagues. Um, for me to, to come in and actually introduce me. And so creating space in, in the circle so that it becomes a semicircle is really important because it means that you actually create space for people to, um, to become part of the circle, become part of the group, but also remember to um, pay it forward and keep openings for the circle in other capacities. So for example, um, one thing that I'm doing is that I've I've open sourced a library of of tech terms. So it's it's a work in progress. I'm I'm just getting started, but of of tech terms because there's so many tech terms that people use like orthogonal that um, that can be kind of disorienting to people who are first coming into into tech, and and so yeah, um, you are welcome to check that out and. Um, and contribute and make a pull request, and that's and that's one way in in, a, in which you can create a semicircle figuratively. And then I'd say avoid joking joking relationships because they they can be um, alienating so easily. Like you don't know the symmetry, you don't know whether you have an asymmetrical or symmetrical relationship with somebody off the bat, and even like working with somebody a year or two in, like there, there are certain things that that you just cannot know that that could be alienating if you put them up as subjects for for joking, um, and so that's that's um, really important. Um, I think one great, great, great example is when that was used in the last talk was somebody asking, "Hey, why are why aren't you drinking?" And you don't know like what, like why somebody might not be drinking, and so um, and and so yeah, like don't joke with people because um, one, it's it's an easy way to alienate, and two. Um, you don't know the whether there's a symmetry of your relationship, and three, um, I think that oftentimes people use joking as some sort of cover for for malicious intent, and so like remove joking from the, from the from the equation um, because it's can be often injurious, and then. Um, be helpful instead of indicating helpfulness. Helpfulness. So it's really important to um, to be helpful with your full attention and when you're asked to help. Uh, so so help instead of showing like sug um, showcasing your most helpful face. Actually, be helpful. Um, and I I think that one thing that people do is they they well actually a lot and they <laughs> and by by going well actually often 
they, they're, they're correcting people, and it's often on a, a very pedantic point, um, and, and they just, and especially when somebody has the, the bulk of, of the idea right. Um, of course, we're, we're, in, we're in a field where, where we have to um, work with uh, machines that have to be precise. So yes, knowledge and rectitude are, are important. But it's also important to, um, to make sure that you can communicate this, um, communi communicate correction in an empathetic way. And also, it's important to, let's see, it's also important to not just walk around and well actually people and jump into conversations that you're not part of, like this. So <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's important to, to actually help people when you're asking, when, who are asking for help, and to, and to help them um, in the way that they're asking for help. And yeah, also answer questions without condescension or without any sort of false sense of shock because it's like so often like, oh, like people are surprised that you don't know how to use um, whatever esoteric uh, tool. And, and it's really funny because like, it, it fails to acknowledge the different pathways by which people arrive at learning coding and so and it's also very dogmatic and so yeah um, like we don't want to we don't want to um, do that because it discourages people from asking questions and that really makes people uh, and and the and the thing is that people are supposed to in programming um, really buy into intellectual curiosity and if you're if you're not if you're not asking questions, then you're not satisfying your intellectual curiosity. So, yeah, that's that's the essence of, of my talk. Um, I got a I got a lot of um, good stuff from a lot of different sources that you can you can find on my GitHub gist that uh, for this talk, and so you can find me on on the internet. Um, as copacetic, that's my Twitter and my GitHub, and so you can look at my GitHub gist, and once again, check out Verbal Remedies and add to it. Thank you. <laughs>